and a while for somebody who's on social media is like a couple days. <laughs> but there's reason for me to do a live feed today. One, I'm at the store and I kind of want, wanted to uh, take a minute to walk you guys through what the plans are for our building and for um, what I have going on here. But also, I went shopping yesterday and I filled the back of my car full of stuff. So this is kind of a uh, what's in the trunk episode. And yes, I use the Jag for picking because when you have any kind of car, you end up filling it with stuff when you're in the antiques business. And that's what we did today. Um, hope you guys are all well. I'll try and answer questions as we go here. Um, I see all sorts of people joining us from Portugal, Florida. I imagine we'll have people from around the world on this morning because uh, it is earlier in the day, which means it's probably dinner time across the pond or close to it. Uh, we've got Norway, Idaho. <laughs> as you guys are uh, logging on, I'm going to walk you through what's happening here. So um, first things first, I guess we'll do the unboxing and then I'm going to give you guys a tour of what's happening at the store and um, show you what's going on. So let's flip it. First things first. Okay, I decided to drive the Jag today. Drop Steven off at school. He likes driving in the old cars. Every time we go for a ride in this, he's like, Dad, the old cars are just cooler somehow. And I'm like, I know, right? That's why Dad likes them. Uh, all right. If you didn't know, E-Type Jags like this, it's kind of a hatchback deal on the back. So you can actually fit a surprising amount of stuff in it. And that's exactly what I did here today. I stopped last night at a gentleman's house and ended up picking up some collectibles. Um, some were ornamental, like this little train. It's probably like an inexpensive thing, but I thought it was kind of cute and things like that. Household sort of decor in that sells pretty well, so I picked it up. Um, and I got all these boxes of toy cars. Now, some he picked up obviously at antique sales or what have you. That's a this is a replica, sort of a um, a throwback set to the original Lesneys, but it has its case. It's intended to hang on a wall, and then you put the little vehicles and stuff on top of the boxes, like that when you display it. So it's still kind of a neat little display. And it's uh, the first sort of few, it's not numbered, but it's the first few little uh, matchbox as a replica. This came out probably in 1992 or so. They're getting to be quite old on their own. That said, what else did we get? Motorcycle with sidecar. This is probably a 1980s Chinese replica of a Japanese toy. If you see a tin toy like this, it says made in Japan. It's probably from the 50s or 60s. Or if you see made in Germany or America. If you see made in China, well, that's probably 1980s or newer. They bought a lot of the uh, molds from the Japanese back in the day. So a lot of this stuff is based off the original molds, but done after the fact. Still a nice little piece. So same thing, we got the little double-decker bus, <laughs> friction bus. Um, this is, um, it's a, I think it's, is it Marks? Yeah, it's Marks. So this would be a American, probably made in Japan though. Marks made in Amer were made in US and Japan, but this is Dick Tracy squad car. Kind of a neat little guy. Good condition. It's got the wind up crank on it. And sometimes people collect and then they end up selling off their collections. Or in this case, the gentleman was moving too bad. This was one of my favorites. It's the Corgi Batmobile, and it's got all these little working features on it, but um, if they ever get flipped over and stepped on, this plastic dome breaks, but you can buy all the replacement parts for these online if a person wanted to restore it, and there are actually YouTube channels where people do just that. They restore these things, so uh, some little toys in here. That's actually in surprisingly good shape. A little ambulance, a little Cadillac. See, I wouldn't mind something like that in real life and some other little toys. Oh, look, do you guys know what this is? I know what this is, but do you guys know what it is? Anybody remember who drove this car? That's Telly Savalas' car from Kojak. So I think that's what, probably like a, uh, yeah, it's a Buick Regal, probably about a 1976 or something like that. And they put their little police light, you could put the police light up on the roof. It didn't do anything. Corgi went a long way. They had lots of cars that had functions and working features in this little Kojak car here. Didn't do a darn thing but it's still part of the movie-themed sort of collection, which I collect. I don't remember if I had that one or not. Nice little dinky toy. Some people call Hot Wheels dinky toys, like it's a, sort of a colloquial expression for toy cars. But this is truly a dinky toy. You can see on the bottom, it says dinky toys. These were made by Meccano. 
That's the reason why people call Hot Wheels and other toys dinky toys because of this particular brand. But there's only one true dinky toy and that's that one. In the 60s, it was sort of dinky and corgi. Now this was cool. I, some, of the some of the paints have been used up, but come on. You're not gonna leave Bob, a 1980s Bob Ross painting set behind. Um, <laughs> so I just thought that was so cool. And Bob Ross stuff is very collectible. So even though this is a, you know, just more or less an empty box with a few things of paint in it, I picked it up because somebody's probably gonna want that and put it on display in their studio or, you know, like somebody like my friend Josh, who's an artist, would probably like that on their shelf. It's in really good shape. So who cares if it's missing some of the brushes and stuff? I think it's nifty. More toy cars. And it's always nice when you get them with the boxes, like this little police accident unit. It doesn't have the full box, but it does have the little base that it sat on. And uh, that's still handy. It would have just had uh, sort of a plastic cover that went over top. And you guys remember Thunderbirds? Uh, in the 1990s, they re reissued some of this stuff. And this is the reissue set. However, it's still cool. Back when puppets were king, <laughs> and they had all these, uh, the English really had a lot of these little sort of puppet shows, which many people are very fond of. And even a set like that being a 1990s reissue is still getting fairly collectible. This was kind of cool. This is an original probably from the 70s Cinderella's coach from the films from the film Slipper in the Rose I guess that would qualify it as a movie or TV car hmm let's see and look at all the little Austin taxis and Gia's all sorts of matchbox in the boxes for me this is kind of heaven because I love all this sort of stuff um you know what would be funny is if there was a a miniature of a Jag E type in here I didn't even look there might be. <laughs> That'd be kind of neat. Is there one? No, maybe not. But to have a miniature E-type in the back of an E-type would be kind of funny. Okay, I'm going to close that up. That's all stuff I have to price and put away later. That's Alex's later on uh, job to do. But that's all got to make its way into the store. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you guys sort of a tour of what's happening with the yard. And we're going to talk a little bit about construction. So as you know, over the past week, we got uh, quite a bit of work done here at the old shop. Last year, we got the foundation done. For, well, I shouldn't say foundation, it's a patio and it's concrete. Sometimes I mix up words I don't mean to. Like I said, cement when it's actually concrete. Cement is a part of concrete, I know that, but sometimes when you're talking, you say the wrong things. Happens to me surprisingly a lot. <laughs> um, so here is, I'm just gonna flip this around. Here's what we're looking at as of today. We have the, this is the foundation. So we've got the patio, we've got the foundation. The building will be set back a little bit so we don't take away from the original kind of architecture that's going on. And plus I like to have a picnic table. I came here once and there was a whole group of ladies sitting there having like some sort of, I don't know, I'd like to say they're having a bridge meeting. Uh, who knows what they were doing. There was a bunch of senior citizen ladies sitting at the table and I parked my car in the back and I walked along the front and I said, good morning ladies and they said we're in the middle of a meeting right now like I was bothering them as they're on my land but whatever <laughs> so I was just like eh fine so uh yeah I don't know if that's <laughs> I do like having a table as part of the community and one of my favorite things one of my favorite things about having this patio here is that oftentimes I'll see families here they'll have ice cream from the store um, I've seen people having a picnic here with their family uh, we're right across from a park, right across from a community hall, and uh, it's just a nice little spot to come hang out. And that's probably why we put some of the, the uh, trees here and the flowers. I just wanted to be a friendly little spot for the neighbors. Um, so I love having this here. And we didn't want to lose that portion of it. So we set the building back and the building will be back here. Now, you can imagine I'm going to be walking in the door. <coughs> Actually, it's going to be an, an outswing door. So it'll go, <coughs> makes a different noise. Um, and yesterday I had to come and I was shoveling, trying to get this all dug out. I have to go down um, 30 inches from the slab to put a foam barrier in. And I started digging it out and I got fairly far. This was actually a big mountain of dirt. And I, I kind of ran out of time yesterday. So I might tear into that again later today. Um, we want to get that all done before they come, but we have to do all down the side here too. Probably should have done this before they poured the slab, but to be honest, the concrete uh, guys thought that the 
contractor putting the building up was going to do it and vice versa. So it didn't get done. It kind of falls on me. Um, this is just all, well, there's going to be, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to give you the full future tour here. Imagine you walk in the door. Do, 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 do. I don't know how you walk like that. <laughs> Whoa, uh, let's not have water on the floor. Um, you walk on the floor. There's going to be shelves right about there. That's going to be open into the other space. So it'll be a continuation with the double doors open into the uh, existing store. There's going to be a counter right about there. A prep sink. So we can have a little sort of barista station here. A washroom right there. A mechanical room. Madame Rack's piano right here by these big double opening doors. These doors are big enough you could actually drive a car through. Uh, um, and then we're going to have even do a big mural and then do a booth. One really nice little place to sit. One nice place to camp out in here. Uh, we'll probably end up doing some stools along the counter. And then uh, shelving all the way along. Moroccan kind of floors, white walls, uh, tin ceiling and antique fixtures. It'll look like you're in some European building from the 20s when you're inside. That's the goal anyway. And I've been saving antique fixtures and, and everything for quite some time. Um, the tile, I could source that new, but the uh, shelving, I actually found a fellow that has a whole bunch of antique shelves and I'm supposed to go pick it up on Saturday with my son, Stephen. And for, for antique shelves, you gotta go take them up. So imagine this, right now the backyard looks like trash. Um, that's because it's a construction site. Somebody was here yesterday and they said, your backyard looks like garbage. I'm like, I know, it's a construction site. And he said, well, you should put some sod down. I said, why? It's gonna get run over by trucks and construction crews and stuff. So anyway, I recognize that the yard needs a little bit of work, but that's fine. We're gonna get it all done. So imagine this, this is my vision, imagine this. Um, two doors, not, oh, rock, 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 rock. <laughs> not the devil's pitchforks, okay. Oh, it's buffering. Are we back yet? <laughs> okay, we'll see if we're back yet. This might be where they drop a commercial in. <laughs> Are we back yet, guys? Okay, all right. So um, the plan is that we have this beautiful little courtyard. In the yard. Maybe I got too far away from the building, <laughs> but we want to do a little courtyard back there with uh, nice grass and flowers and picnic tables, and uh, be able to open this building wide up. So if you can imagine the big doors at the back open, big garage door at the front. You could have really nice breezy access through here. It's going to be absolutely lovely, um, and we're taking those steps to make it all happen. Oh, I just really hope that, uh, you know, there's no other hiccups or anything along the way. Uh, uh, let's see. I'm going to read some questions now while I have you guys here. And I'm going to go into the shade because it is going to be 30 degrees Celsius here today. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. It's hot either way. But look, I can sit outside in front of my store and take in the fresh air. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's do uh, a few minutes for Q&A while I'm at the shop. I can even do a little walkthrough while I'm here too. I am gonna run out and grab some uh, grass seed though, just to try and cover some of the bald spots back there for the time being. Oh, the rolls. Brand, I wish I had a update on the rolls for you. In fact, as I was driving into work today, as much as I love driving my, my old classic car, I thought, how nice would this be? I should be driving that Rolls Royce right now. Um, as of right now, I don't really know where the car is. They, um, uh, they have it at some shop somewhere getting painted. Don't know how bad the damage was. Uh, if I sound upset, it's because I am actually a little bit upset about it. Um, so hopefully we'll get that resolved quickly. I'm trying very hard to give them the benefit of the doubt and um, let them take care of this. But uh, yeah, I'd like my car back at some point. It's supposed to be done. I'm supposed to be driving it right now. So I will follow up with them today and uh, hopefully I'll get the thing back before too long. Um, are you going to put a second, second picnic table up? On the front, I'll probably do little bistro cafe tables with umbrellas, uh, probably like two little round tables there. And um, in the backyard, I'll put some picnic tables in, yes. Uh, Dennis Young says, Alex, how far is the land in New House from the store? The land in New House, should we get it, and we don't know if we're even going to be able to get it yet, is uh, only probably about another six minutes distance from where my current house is, so it's really not that far. Um, somebody said, what happened to the uh, Rolls Royce? I don't understand. They, I went to go pick it up because it was supposed to be done, and... <laughs> I went there with my license plate and my registration and they said, Ooh, the car's not here. And anyway, as it turned out, they drove into my car in the shop and took it to a shop to get it painted. 
um, which as far as I know, you generally should call your client and let them, you know, they should have gone through insurance and you should have talked to the client and made sure that they're happy with the place it was going anyway. Um, so yeah, that, uh, that was, let's just say a bit frustrating. Mm. So we're going to, uh, we're going to try and, uh, you know, get that resolved. Incidentally, one thing, I don't know if you guys can see or not. We have a family of geese that live in my backyard. They're out wandering about right now, but they hang out in my backyard. Uh, I kind of hate the thought that we're going to disturb these little guys when we start construction, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm being swarmed by them right now. As we speak right now, I have, and we don't call them Canada geese here because, hey, we're in Canada, but look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. And they're all kind of lingering around just probably about eight to 10 feet away from me. There's geese all over the place, which means uh, we'll have less bugs in our grass pretty soon. <laughs> Name them. <laughs> uh, no, you know, geese are ferocious. They're like, they are like little dinosaurs. You get too close and they start hissing. Steven said they're like the, uh, they're like bird snakes because <laughs> their head goes up like a cobra and they start hissing and stuff. <laughs> anyway, I don't mind them, but they definitely have lots of, um, you know, there's always like one on patrol. Look, I'll show you. There's always one on patrol. So you, I don't know if you can see those ones are like, yeah, looking for food. What are those ones doing? That's the patrol goose right there. And those ones are kind of keeping their eye out and they're hissing. Like they see cars coming and they're like, you better stay back. Now they're all on high alert, except for that one who does, who seems oblivious. They're like, yeah, there's enough of you guys. It's not going to eat me. <laughs> oh, anyway. Um, so I guess it, the, it feels crazy that this is all coming together right now, that the store is making its way to uh, fruition. I was thinking though, like when we originally did this plan, which you can see right next to me, that's essentially what the building is going to look like. But we were planning on doing the building in the same colors, but I think I'd like to do it kind of all white and keep it very crisp and clean. Um, so I am going to make a couple changes, I think, to the coloring of the building because I don't want it to look like it's just some little wing of my current store. Um, I want it to look like it's its own unique building. Um, but yeah, it uh, it's crazy. This is all happening now. I don't know how long I have to leave this sign up for. <laughs> and even though I have this sign here, uh, even though I've got this sign saying approved development uh, and then it shows a new addition going there People always come in. They're like, why are you tearing it down? I'm like, I'm not tearing the place down. I'm trying to protect it <laughs> Oh boy, kind of like my door handle on the inside of the store. Our store is old. So it has an in-swing door um, And people can never find the door handle They like push on it and walk into it and stuff like they expect it to be automatic or open on its own So I painted the door handle red. All right, I may as well show you <laughs> This is what happens Every day this happens at my store. Probably because I put a push bar on here just for looks. I didn't want to put it on the outside because I was afraid it was going to get stolen. But I painted the door handle red because people were always like, let me out. Like I can't figure out how to get out. So I'm like, if there's a door handle there. So I thought if I paint that door handle red, surely they'll see it. I think it's helped a little bit, but still there's a little bit of that. Like, <laughs> you know, you get to watch people in your store that are completely stuck. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm going to try and answer some more questions here too. I can't change anything um, about the design of the building. I saw somebody giving me suggestions on the new building design. I actually thought about changing it completely and doing something different. Uh, but they said that it would have to go through the city and that might take another four or five months or so before it gets approval. So I'm not touching a darn thing with that. We're just going to build it the way it is. It's going to be fine. We're going to build it. It's going to go up. But if I change one little detail about it in terms of the architecture, um, I might be delayed and not get to build this year. So I'm not going to do that. Um, let's see. Oh, somebody, people always say you need to, you need to get the squeaks off your door. No, I like the squeaks on the door and the bell because it lets me know when somebody's walking in. <laughs> as silly as that sounds, you kind of expect an old building to have a bit of a squeaky door anyway. Um, but when I hear the door squeaking, I know that somebody's here. So it's kind of a nice little extra, uh, it notifies me. We have an old bell at the top too. Um, what have I been up to the past little bit? Well, we, oh, hey, I almost forgot to tell you. The auction is up. All the stuff that I bought for Morris and Donna, or I shouldn't say bought, that we, we had an arrangement for me to, uh, uh, to take care of. All of that stuff is now up for auction at kauctions.ca. So you can get uh, online and go and see the things that we found in the house. Some of the things we found in the house. There's a, almost 800 lots. And some of those lots that are at the auction are boxes full of stuff. Oh, there's an awful lot of stuff going through. 
Um, so go check it out. I forgot the auction is live right now and it ends June 12th. I probably should have mentioned that before. Um, I was, let's see, we're hanging around the store and I've been trying to order different products. And when we get the new shop opened up, it's going to be a combination of cafe and market. Um, so I've been finding suppliers that, uh, and that's kind of the one nice thing. Oh, thank you, Dan. We got a super chat. Hey, Dan, I think you're our first super chat of the day. I'm going to set you guys down right here. I'm going to talk to you. Um, look, I'm hands free. <laughs> oh, actually, I'm not Hans free though. He's going to be showing up any minute. Um, so we are trying to source new products. That's what I'm getting at. Because when we do the new location, it's going to be a combination sort of a cafe, um, with some market and some fresh goods and stuff. And as a result, I've been trying to find suppliers for that because before long, come fall, we'll hopefully have that space ready and we'll be able to open it up and have people in it. Now, um, the benefit of that is that uh, sometimes suppliers give you samples. And so I called up this supplier locally um, called Muley's. Really good stuff. And the funny thing about this Muley's place is that Years back, I was asked to give a speech at the university to the business class. And uh, I went there and I gave a talk to them. And I was talking about, you know, um, keeping your expenses down with your location and trying to offer great products and all the whatever I was talking about. <laughs> and um, years later, I contact this company and, and asked them about carrying some of their product. Turns out he was one of the students that I gave a speech to, um, you know, several years back. And he remembered me. Um, and so now it looks like years later, we might be doing business together. Uh, he was a student and I was a guest speaker and uh, it's funny how the world works. But they carry a great range of like locally made meats and cheeses and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, and they brought me a nice little gift bag. So the other day uh, we were able to have a big charcuterie board um, on them and uh, it worked because it's all really good. I feel a big sneeze coming. If that happens, I apologize. <laughs> I'm gonna flip it around. Oh, hang on, let me just zoom back out again here. Incidentally, we carry, this is, <laughs> this is a lava lamp before it's working. It has to heat up. This is like the world's biggest lava lamp. Look at that thing. It's, uh, I don't know, like four feet. No, it's not four feet. It's probably like three feet tall. It's pretty big. It's a big sucker. Um, and we've been carrying some, sometimes funny little products like this just make me laugh. Um, <laughs> look at this. This is hand soap. Pretentious and vaguely imported looking liquid hand soap. <laughs> Scented with name dropping and rampant braggery. Uh, or make others comfortable, pretend to be happy, uh, or lather up a better personality, um, or the original snake oil. So, sometimes um, these little things basically just make me smile and laugh, and, and uh, it's actually a good quality product, so we, we get stuff like that in on occasion too. Um, so all this stuff basically that's at the front of the store, like the, um, the coffees, the teas, the jams that we have in our shop, because we are a general store, we're an antique store, but we're also a general store. Um, a lot of this stuff will be going over to the new space and we'll be um, putting more of the collectibles and items like that in this area. We'll probably still do the candy in this side, uh, candy and soda and ice cream on this side, but the other side will be like the jams, jellies and market, fresh market goods. I am uh, really looking forward to actually starting to decorate and get that space ready. You should see these shelves. Actually, you'll be able to see these shelves because my son Steven and I are going on a road trip um, very soon in, in just a couple days and we'll be taking you guys along with us. We'll do a video of it when we go to pick these old shelves up. It's an abandoned sort of general store and that's, I love to salvage. I love to reuse things where possible. And if you guys recall, the shelves that we have in this store behind me were salvaged from a general store that was falling in and uh, it was abandoned. And we were able to save those. These shelves are actually from probably the late 1800s, early 1900s, so even a little bit older than my building. But they've got all the original grain bins. I don't know if you can see them down below there. Here, I'll flip it for you. We keep Hot Wheels and stuff in them now, but they would have had grain and oats and flour and stuff in it originally. Um, but I love this original sort of look, and I'm so glad that I went out to get it because it really adds to the architecture in the building. Um, and all of our light fixtures are antique light fixtures. We really try and give the look of an old general store when you're inside the building. So when I got this opportunity to go and get some other antique shelves and I need shelves for the new space, um, I had to take them up on it, but it does mean a three and a half hour drive um, to Saskatchewan to go and pick them up. Uh, but it'll be a fun road trip. I think Steven's coming with me. He's gonna help me uh, lift and move them and get them loaded up. And it's going to be um, really fun. Somebody says, who bets Alex buys the entire store? You know, the funny thing is, I don't know how funny it is, that, building is actually for sale and it's going it's it's kind of like my store but maybe a little bit bigger 
It's on a main street. It's really far away. It's going no reserve at auction. If that store was closer, sure, it would be of interest. But for now, <laughs> I just need the shelves. Uh, Grace, thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate that. Um, I'll try and answer a couple more questions here from you guys since I'm here at the shop. And uh, boy, I don't know. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Uh, are you going to pop in and see Austin? Um, Austin's in a slightly different part of Saskatchewan. Yeah, it's um, uh, he's near Provost is where he is, a uh, different area. But if I, I would go see him, I'm always happy to visit with Austin or his brother. His brother lives in town here now. Uh, hello from Slovenia. It's a, How diverse is that? Somebody's saying hello from Slovenia and the next person hello from Illinois. Um, let's see. Uh, Carla Zagara sent a $3 super chat. Thank you. Uh, Amy um, says, hi, Alex. So happy for you. Lots of us are concerned about the saplings outside. If you consider they might damage you or your neighbor's building, do you have a plan? Uh, yes, the little trees I put outside, um, they grow quite uh, vertically. And the roots of them also, I can't remember what, exactly the name of the tree that they're called, um, but the root system also goes pretty well straight down. So uh, they don't spread out. Um, I was assured by the greenhouse that it should be fine to put in a space like that. Um, we'll keep them trimmed back so they don't get too crazy, but they don't get that big. Um, they get tall, and, but they stay skinny, so it should be just fine. Um, do you have an online shop? No, I, I don't have an online shop. Some of you have asked me that before. The reason why I don't have an online shop is that um, things sell generally at a pretty fast pace in the store. Um, sometimes I show something on a video or something comes in and it's gone that hour or the next day. So the effort it was taking to put everything online um, and to get things listed and show what it was, it would take hours of my time to do it and um, it would just basically be sold already. So even my own time um, is better spent on other things. And even if I paid somebody, well, I'd be paying somebody just to put something up just to take it back down again. Um, so no, we, we try and offer sort of an in-store experience and um, uh, we haven't done the online store yet. Well, we did, but we don't anymore. Um, kind of, I think like uh, Mike at American Pickers, I think they just have an online store for their stuff that they sell, like their t-shirts and that, but um, not for everything else. Who dusts everything? Myself and Sean uh, will get the old uh, Windex out and, and dust off the shelves and keep things tidy around here. Um, let's see. Uh, I know it's not a poplar tree. I can't remember the exact name. Uh, somebody says, uh, May says that they talked to another antique store and they said it wasn't worth the effort. You have to think there are thousands and thousands and thousands of items in stock. And um, it would be an awful lot of effort. If I, was an, if I only did this for my garage at home, it would be easier because A, I wouldn't be carrying that this much product because I wouldn't be filling a store, but it would be much easier. I mean, right now, I'll give you an example, um, the shelf behind me, there's a 1936 Leica camera, there's a Catalan lighter, um, there are bow brownies, which are very rare by Walter William Teague, who's a famous uh, Art Deco designer. Um, there's a all metal 1960s uh, or early 70s Tamiya Sherman tank. Um, there's hand carved chess set pieces, welded chess sets, the little sewing machines. See those guys? I have it in uh, black and in the gray, a multiplex typewriter. Um, those books are original Beethoven, Mozart, and so forth. That's original 1700s music sheets. So yeah, I mean, all of this stuff online would probably do well, but what we do is um, we occasionally will just thin the shelves out and do an auction sale, and then you guys can bid on it then. That mask somebody was asking about before, we got that on the island of uh, Murano in Italy, and they were making, or is it Burano? It was Burano, and a tiny little island, very, very cool. And uh, there was a little lady making those masks by hand. She took like a mask form and then she would add detail to it and paint them and they were selling them because they're big into their masquerade balls. Melissa and I got that over 20 years ago. Crazy how time flies when we first met. And there's stuff all over the place like vintage slot cars. I always like this kind of stuff. The toys, you can see the toys I got in the car this morning are going to have a nice home here. But um, yeah, you, heck, you just never know what somebody's going to be into. So we always try and have a... Um, a little bit of variety. Um, no matter where you look, there's something kind of different. But I'm gonna go back out to the car and kind of get ready to lock up. So there's there's ye old Jag. What I should do is I should offload all that stuff and I have to go get a little bit of grass seed so I can do some uh, filling. I might get some flowers too. I wanna to go to a greenhouse today and do something where all that dirt is by where my trees are and make it look a little bit more scenic.
So with that, guys, I am uh, meant to open here in a little over an hour. So I'm going to jump off the live feed. I'm going to a greenhouse to try and find some flowers and maybe do a little gardening before work today and uh, offload these toys. So thank you so much. Oh, I guess that means that I'm loading flowers and stuff in my car. Oh, well, it's a car. That's what it's meant for. <laughs> so guys, have a wonderful day. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button for future episodes. Um, I'll take you on the field trip uh, with Steven and I on a future video to go to the old sort of abandoned store and get the shelves out of it. And uh, don't know where I'm going to put them yet. We don't have a building to put them in yet. Like I'm buying shelves for a building that doesn't even exist. I feel like that's putting the cart before the horse, but sometimes these uh, sort of deals, you have to jump on them when they're there. Anyway, guys, have a lovely day. We'll see you all soon. And as always, bye for now.